Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Tips and Principles. In this series, we're looking at ways that you can make yourself better in the construction industry by providing a series of tips, principles, techniques and ideas that you can use readily in the construction industry. So today we're going to be focusing in on, thanks to one of the comments that was left on the YouTube channel, uh, an introduction to lean video. I plan to have a series of videos in this particular area because it's really changing the way that we're doing things in the construction industry. There's lots of opportunities in the construction industry to improve and using a lot of the lean principles can really go a long way to helping us improve and to be more efficient at what we do. So let's take a look. All right, so what is lean construction? Well, you know, it's a new way and new is a relative term. I would say that, uh, well, lean construction is based on lean manufacturing. Lean manufacturing's been around since the 1950s and has been improving steadily onto itself. Uh, the most widely known would be the Toyota production system example and best example of uh, lean manufacturing and most successful as well uh, if we want to think about it that way but construction is a little bit of a different animal right uh, we have uh, weather that we have to deal with we have unique individual projects we have different sites different conditions that we're dealing with all these things come into play and uh, being different, we have to uh, be a little bit different in our approach to it. So lean construction really kind of got off the, it, off the ground, so to speak, in the early 1990s. Uh, it's heavily researched. Uh, its foundations were uh, developed by uh, Ballard and Howell. Uh, you can read up a lot on that history to it. It's been well documented. I would say, at least uh, in my neck of the woods, uh, Toronto, Canada, I started to really notice it taking off uh, around the early 2010s. Uh, you know, it's been there, but I mean, it really started to get a foothold around then with some of our bigger contractors uh, adopting certain elements of it still as a ways to go uh, and it's still kind of in its infancy in that way and the nice thing is it's an evolving uh, process and there's a lot of different pieces to the puzzle when we talk about lean so I'm just going to give you a kind of a, a quick overview of that but as I said it you know it really is uh, has its origins in manufacturing uh, improvements to quality improvements to efficiencies, uh, reduction of uh, waste, uh, leading to much more productive uh, construction sites and manufacturing plants. So the other thing is control. Now, you know, I've been around a long time and, you know, I've even written books with that uh, in the title, uh, Planning, Scheduling and Control. Uh, it's it's fine the aspect of uh, control but with lean what we're trying to get af after is very quick feedback because construction has gotten more and more complex and so while traditionally we would kind of monitor a project and we'd have a schedule and we would get feedback on it that would be the monitoring process and then that would give us an idea of where we are and how we got there lean is much more quick in its feedback mechanisms and so we have this uh, scheduling process that's typically used called last planner system or LPS which is a series of sort of five levels of scheduling uh, that provides ever increasing certainty of success as you get closer to the work but also provides very quick feedback so that if you have problems and issues you can rectify them you know as they're occurring which is very important as I said our level of complexity has gone up. Um, performance is maximizing value, minimizing waste at the project level. Well, there is so much waste in construction I can't uh, even begin to describe. Uh, everywhere I look I can see it and you know you, you can develop a sort of eye for these things over time working in the industry or not. Some people just ignore it and shrug their shoulders and just say that's the way it is. Well, lean's not about saying that's the way it is. That's lean is about saying, all right, that's what's going on now. How can we improve upon it, right? We may not be able to change the world in a day, 
but we can definitely make improvements on it. And if we continuously make improvements on it over a period of time, it will be much, much less wasteful. Uh, project delivery, this is the other aspect. It, it Full out lean gets into contract models. Uh, it is hard to have the add what we call value to the customer. In this example, I'll say the customer is the end user. Uh, if people weren't with ex expertise and knowledge, if they weren't involved in providing inputs and collaboration in the design uh, stage. And very often, like in lump sum models, our traditional most popular model, that doesn't happen. We're more in a reactive mode when we get on the project saying, oh, this doesn't work, or why didn't they do it this way, that sort of thing. And we're also very adversarial. Uh, Lean tries to not be adversarial. Lean works at being collaborative. Big difference. Uh, there and contract models and incentives can make a difference uh, for sure uh, so going from say a lump sum to a design build to construction management but really full out lean getting to what we call integrated project delivery models uh, where there's incentives that encourage collaboration to benefit all and to optimize for the project and not for the individual which is important when in construction we have so many different players and stakeholders in the process. So that gives you another little bit of a heads up. I've given a source here that I took this kind of from the LCI uh, Canada website. Uh, same with the next slide. But again, every country has typically its own uh, Lean Construction Institute national sort of association. Uh, and you can check yours, whatever country you happen to be. Of course, the U.S. has a very large contingent in that area. And also certification, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so it is also about value to the customer. Now, it's important to establish who's the customer. The customer is anybody that is you're passing something to. It's going to next. That is who the customer is. So when we think about lean, the customer is anything that anybody or anything that I'm giving to somebody else. So the consultant could be the customer if the contractor is providing them with something. The contractor could be the customer if the consultant is providing them with something. So you can see how this switches back and forth. It's not always about who's paying the bill. Uh, the uh, painter can be the customer of the drywaller or the, or the electrician can be the customer of the drywaller. If it means to satisfy the electrician, you're not leaving taping compound or mud in the actual outlet boxes, right? So these are things about what satisfies the next person in line, not necessarily who is paying the next person. A different way of thinking about things. Coordinating action through pulling and continuous flow. Well, traditional construction we kind of establish is push. So we develop this critical path schedule and then we push to those dates. Uh, and often we'll push things just to get them going on the site, whether we need them or not, because the date says that we should send it, but the site might not be ready for it. Pull is, we're not sending it until the site is ready for it. The site is pulling it to to them and it actually means also a different process in scheduling from the end to the beginning i think stephen covey said start with the end in mind well pull planning actually has that kind of psychology going for it, it gets a lot deeper than that as i said this is just an introduction but decentralizing decision making through transparency and empowerment this means that you're involving the participants who have expertise that others don't in their specific areas. And that's all giving them a certain amount of uh, autonomy in the process, but not really autonomy because they're collaborating and engaging with everybody uh, on the project. So that's not sort of coming from way up above. You've got more of the grassroots. The four persons, for example, are heavily involved in the last planner system of scheduling particularly six weeks and less out, but also to the milestone stage as well. Uh, so that can be very, very helpful when you have that expertise, as, especially on the short term, because you really have a good handle on how to do things in the short term as things come up. Lean Design Construction is a production management-based project delivery system, emphasizing the reliable, speedy delivery of value. 
it challenges the generally accepted belief that there's always a trade-off between time, cost, quality, and safety. So we can think of, the, you know, we often talk about the iron triangle, time, cost, quality. And, you know, if you run behind schedule, you compromise uh, one of them typically because you, if you want to make up, if, it, if time is the paramount thing, then usually things are going to cost more and quality is going to go down because you're rushing things. Lean says if we can collaborate early on, we can work a lot of these bugs out. And so we're not compromising. We're reaching effective levels of what the client desires and what they can afford, really designing value into the project before it actually um, starts from that perspective. Less change orders, that sort of thing. You're less likely to have missed items when you have inputs early on as opposed to later. Your greatest opportunity to save the most money is before you start. It's in the design stage, right? Um, so these are all playing into that uh, element of the triangle, the time, cost, quality. And of course, in construction, we think about safety. And then very often we have to deal with scope changes because of the chain multitude of changes that are occurring on a project traditionally. So in lean construction, two, two main points. We want to add value to the customer, as I mentioned. And remember, the customer is anybody that you're transferring things. It's not just uh, the person that's paying the bill, right? Uh, removal of waste. Lean gets into, I won't do it on this one, but there are eight areas of waste. You know, we can talk about defects, uh, overproduction, wait time, non-utilized talent, transportation, inventory, motion, extra processing. These are all areas of waste that add up to a lot of waste in construction. And just, you know, if you want a quick example of it, just think about uh, if uh, you're waiting in line for a washroom, portable washroom on site, or it's not located in the right spot, or there's not enough of them. It's just pure waste, right? That wasted motion if you have to walk too far, uh, etc. So these are all areas. So we, if we can remove or eliminate waste, that's going to dramatically improve productivity. Just think about all the things that you do twice. Uh, that's going to be um, a, a lot of extra work, needless work. Now, there's these six tenets uh, or principles that are discussed in Lean, right? And so it, these expand out to a lot of things, but quickly optimize the whole. Think of traditional projects, you hire subcontractors, they're just optimizing typically for themselves. They wanna get in, they wanna get out. And sometimes that causes a lot of problems on the overall project. You know, I've seen, uh, not to pick on drywallers, but I've seen where, uh, you know, they might say, well, you got six weeks to complete this work. And originally the thought is that they're going to start, you know, on week one and they're going to have 10 people there and work for the six weeks. Well, they don't show up for the first three weeks and then they bring 30 or 40 people and they crash the place the last three weeks and they get done on time and they're like high fiving like they've done this wonderful thing. But meanwhile, the last three weeks, the site was a disaster because it was so it was overrun with drywallers and their materials and everything was in the way. So the other trades all suffered. That's not optimizing for the whole. That's optimizing for the individual. And typically there's winners and losers. We want winners and winners when we think about lean construction. Uh, removal of waste, as I just mentioned, the eight areas of waste, which again, that can be, you know, several hours of intense discussions uh, in there. Focus on process and flow. That's what you're looking for. It's that saying that uh, I heard from uh, Mark Devine, uh, who wrote The Way of the Seal, has an excellent podcast. Um, slow, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. This is what you want. You want smooth and steady. You don't want some, this rushing in, like I just said with the drywall. You want smooth and steady. So you design your schedules around that. Now there's other areas of lean that are, lean is evolving, as I said, other areas in construction that are evolving too, like what we call TAC planning, T-A-K-T. -T. Another one, Scrum. Uh, you can look up Philippe Engineer. Uh, you can look up Jason Schroeder uh, as two that kind of really sort of focus in on um, those particular areas and think about, and they're all about process and flow. So is last planner system, P 
process and flow, creating that through collaboration and engagement and quick learning and feedback generation of value well if we get into the aspect of being involved in the design side then we can ensure that what is being designed is going to make a difference uh, for the client so generation of value is important from that perspective and looking at it what adds value uh, and being involved in that I, I have an example of where there was this uh apartment, uh, not apartment, senior apartment uh, that was being built and it was designed and it had this terrazzo floor and in the Toronto area we don't have a lot of terrazzo uh, companies and the ones that we do have are crazy busy and it was going to take months and months extra time to get it done this way and the contractor after struggling with this suggested to the uh, client uh, that the actual client uh, that they go with these granite slabs that they could use. And the granite was actually less expensive than the terrazzo and the client themselves actually liked the granite better. Uh, that was kind of something the contractor, if they had been involved in at the beginning, would have been able to say that in the design. And instead of losing several months back and forth with this, uh, that would have saved those several months and given the client what they really would have preferred in the first place. They didn't know that was necessarily an option. Uh, continuous improvement, this is huge. So. Lean is about getting better every day. You look at things differently. You create a culture, right? You create a culture in your companies that everybody is looking to do better every day. Improve processes, improve systems, improve relationships. It's all about continuous improvement. And I don't think there's anybody that's listening to this that can say they can't get any better at something. There is always ways to improve and get better at things. And the nice thing about construction, I find, is good or bad, there's so much waste in construction. There's so many opportunities to make improvements. It's just so ripe for it. So that's what I love about lean construction. It's providing us with this great opportunity. And I would suggest if you're starting out in the construction industry that you look at how you can improve uh, things that you can learn in this particular area because it is growing and you know it, it you've got a lot of older people that are in construction industry that are resistant to change that always happens that happens in every sector in every business you know when Einstein came up with his theories in the early 1900s you had professors whose whole careers were based on different things and from being a professor I can kind of understand how that comes from and then they're resistant to it you know who's this upstart saying this and this this is uh, hogwash and it's not going to work uh, and so you know I think it was uh, Max Planck said to Einstein uh, I think that was his mentor said well the thing is some of these professors just have to die out before it gets better right some of these people in construction might have to retire a little bit before they things uh, improve totally but things are changing like it or not and the companies that are able to implement it uh, will be more successful than the ones that don't and uh, it's just a great opportunity that way there is a certification program that AGC Associated General Contractors of America does uh, on liens if anybody's interested you can check that out I actually teach that course uh, the seven modules through uh, Toronto Construction Institute or the Construction Institute of Canada uh, several times a year online. Uh, you can always check that out too. It should be coming up in usually fall and winter uh, time periods. And check out some of the Lean Construction sites like the Lean Construction blog and leanconstruction.org. Uh, there's quite a bit of information out there on that. So hopefully this is a good starting point for you, give you a little bit of an idea. But one more thing before I before I jump, uh, respect for people, all right? That's another huge one. We're talking about engagement. We're talking about collaboration. You better have respect for people. You better build trust, trust in your organization and trust in your relationship. Otherwise, I can tell you, you're wasting your time. You will not be successful with lean. You have to have respect for people and build trust and strong relationships on that if you want to be successful. You have to be transparent with information. So that means you got to show your cards what you're up against and not be hiding things because people lose trust when they find out that you did. So these are all uh, key other elements uh, for lean and helping 
organizations and individuals build those cultures. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Oh, and don't forget, please click subscribe. I have playlists on my YouTube channel. So if you click on my face there on the YouTube channel, you can look then at the playlist uh, and uh, see the different topical areas and the things that we're jumping into. And I tend to mention lean a lot in different videos that I also do. So have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.